Well, hello everyone, and welcome to part three of my web design and programming tutorial in which I will go over all the basics and all the different languages you need to understand and the techniques behind them that you need to understand to become a great web designer or programmer. Well, in the previous tutorials I showed you how to use form information to pass information over to your PHP code and I'm not going to go through all of this. Here basically is the location of the file that I want to send all this form data to which is phploop.php using the post method and here is going to be the label assigned to this text box as you can see right there and here's the submit button and the value being send which you see on the button. So basically what you need to understand is the name of the variable you want to reference over in your PHP PHP code is going to be count2. And now we're going to jump over to the PHP code and show you how to sort through this and go over looping in PHP. Okay, here I am in PHP loop.php, which is where all the form information is going to be sent after the person types in 100, as I have here in this example. And now I'm going to show you how to create while loops. But first, previously I showed you how to get access to that information using dollar sign underscore post as a reference to an array in which all the data from the form is passed over to the PHP program. Well here I'm going to show you how to use another one and it is called request. I'm going to create a variable here first called count2. I'm going to cast that string into an integer like I showed you previously and here's the new guy. Request, unlike post, and yes indeed there's also a get, can receive both form data that is passed in the post method or the get method. So you no longer need to worry about these guys because request is going to work for everything. As I showed you in the, in the form data, however, the variable is going to be called count2. So we're going to reference that and enclose this off with a semicolon. And then I'm also going to create another variable called start num and give it a value of 1. Here I'm going to create a while loop. For the while loop, you basically say that as long as the condition that lies inside of the while loop remains true, you want to continue performing all of the actions over and over and over again, hopefully not in a continuous loop, until that condition is no longer true. So everything is going to continue running that lies between the opening curly brace and the closing brace until this condition right here is no longer true. So as long as the person doesn't enter one, we know this is going to run, okay? So what I'm going to do here is not do something quite so easy. You just use an if statement. What I'm going to do is print out either every even or every odd number that lies between start number and the number that they passed over. In this circumstance, 100. And how I'm going to do that, start num, and I'll perform a modulus on it. Now, if I would say not equal to, what this is going to do is print out all the odd numbers that lie from the start number to the count to or the ending number. Why is it going to do that? Because what I'm doing here with the modulus command is performing a division and then passing back Back, modulus gives you the remainder of a division. So hence, if there is a remainder, that means it's going to be an odd number. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, since I want all of the odd numbers to be printed, I'm going to create a curly brace. I'm going to echo to screen the start number if indeed it is odd. Then I'm going to close off that brace and then I'll show you a couple more new things. I'm going to use the else if, which you've seen previously. Start number is greater than or equal to 1000. Let's say we don't want to print more than 1000 numbers to the screen. There's a real easy way to do that. So if a person types in 10,000 up here, it's only going to print to a maximum of 1000 so it doesn't overuse your computer time or what have you. It's just an excuse for me to type in break because what break will do is it will jump if it is ever called inside of a while loop or any looping structure for that matter, it will jump completely out of the while loop down to here, meaning the line that, that follows the closing curly brace for the while loop and will not continue iterating through even if this condition up here is true. Okay, so that's what break does. Then you have else, meaning if it is an even number, we still are going to need to iterate. So we're going to have to use the shortcut 
plus plus, which adds one to the variable name start number. And then we're going to call the continue command. And what the continue command does is it jumps back up to the beginning of the while loop and continues iterating through it. It doesn't jump out of it, it just doesn't continue going downwards. Like let's say there were additional statements that lied after this, such as in this circumstance there will be, which is another iterator. It is not going to get to this line even though it lies between the opening and closing curly braces for the while loop. It is going to continue, meaning it's just going to skip this line and jump back up here and continue performing all of the tests. And then let's say we want to put some additional breaks after this. Do that just like that. And everything else is already closed off here. So we can save this. And then we can jump over to form two. There's 100 and hit send. And as you can see, it prints out all of the odd numbers to screen. Then if I wanted to come over here and instead print out all of the even numbers, just go into this if statement, hit equals, save it, jump inside of here, hit send, and you can see it prints out all of the even numbers. Well, you could also do something very similar with something, another looping structure called the do while loop. So let's jump down here. The only difference between a do while loop and a while loop is that a do while loop will perform everything between the opening and curly braces, no matter whether the condition is met whenever it is first called or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to call or create iterator to variable and give it a value of 1. And they call it an iterator because it is a value that constantly changes, normally moving forwards, and helps you iterate or cycle through your looping structure that you create. And I'm going to create a do while loop by starting with do. Again, it's going to perform all of the actions that lie between these curly braces. And I'm going to just make this quite simple. I'm going to define while. And I'm going to say iterator2 is less than or equal to 100. Make sure you put that semicolon there. And of course, you close this with the parentheses. And then I'm just going to echo to screen, iterator2, comma, like that. And then I'm going to increase the iterator2 variable by 1 again. That's just a shortcut. And then I'm going to jump in here and copy this, save it, jump over here and run it, you can see here it's printing all of the numbers from 1 to 100. Again, what makes this different from a while loop is this code will be read at least once. What that means is if I put 101 in here and hit save and reload, as you can see it printed 101. It's guaranteed to go through here at least once. So that's the real, real difference. Well now let's say I want to actually come in here, I'm going to actually go jump back into my form information a new one of these and I'm going to do a Fibonacci series. All that is, it's fancy for 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. All a Fibonacci series is is you take this value plus this value and that be equals this, this plus this equals 3, this plus this equals 5 and so forth and so on. Well, I'm going to show you how to actually code that. Create another text box except I'm going to call this Fibonacci like that. And that's all I need to do over there. Now I'm going to jump over to the PHP code and actually calculate this out using a for loop. I'm going to create a variable called max fib is equal to call for the request array. Type in the key that is associated with that array. And here I'm just creating the first two instances that I'm going to add up in my Fibonacci series. And this is how you create a for loop. Here is greater. You define the starting value of the value that you are going to increase in value or to help you iterate through your loop or cycle through your loop, call it whatever you want. And then you define the condition in which you will continue to loop. And then you perform your iteration at the end of it. So the for loop pretty much contains everything that's sort of spread out in the while loop and the do while loop all into this one little box. But it's going to perform everything inside of those curly braces just like the while loop does. And in my circumstance, I'm going to say echo to screen, my first sequence. And if this confuses you at all with the Fibonacci stuff, don't worry about it. I just wanted to do something in the tutorial that was at least semi-interesting instead of just plunking out information. SQL so 2, save me some time. I'm going to copy this, paste it into there. Plus, paste that into there and type in SEC. First sequence is equal to the second sequence. And then I'm going to have the second sequence is equal to sum. That's how you calculate Fibonacci series inside of PHP. 
And you can see if I reload that, that it's printing out the Fibonacci, which is 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 plus 5 equals da 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 And you can see how this number gets very, very big, very, very fast. So there's a couple of sort of real world example ways of using looping inside of PHP. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Till next time.